One documentarian is now suggesting that conditions in today's United States are just as bad as during the Civil War. I'm going to share with you what he said and why it matters to you as a nomad capitalist. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist. We're the channel and the company that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And one of the things I've been hearing from more people recently, many more people recently, is Andrew, I never thought I'd be saying this. I never thought I'd be talking to you. I never thought I'd be watching Nomad Capitalist, but I don't recognize my country. I don't like the direction where it's going. I don't understand how so many people in this once great capitalistic country are opposed to success, opposed to capitalism. They're, uh, they're just saying capitalism should fail. Uh, people are asking for all kinds of free stuff. Uh, all the things that are happening in the Western legacy brain countries. Oh, and by the way, people are opposed to freedom in many cases. People want to take away your freedoms. They're happy to have their freedoms taken away. That's something that I'm hearing more and more from people who are coming and saying, I want a plan B passport. I'm going to stick it up for now. Obviously, I have chosen a different path than those folks. I got out. I got out all the way. But I respect that people just want to protect themselves. And here's another reason why. Uh, Ken Burns, the filmmaker, here's the headline from uh, Mediate.com. Uh, Ken Burns says, current times equal to Civil War, Depression, and World War II, it's really serious, he says. The article begins, historian and documentary filmmaker Ken Burns said that the present day is one of the worst times in American history. Burns made the remarks while on the Smart Less podcast, hosted by Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes, comparing current events with the Civil War, the Depression, and World War II. It's really serious, he says. There are three great crises before this, the aforementioned Civil War, Depression, and World War II. This is equal to it, he said on Monday's episode when asked where the U.S. was headed. He went on to quote comments made by Abraham Lincoln made during a January 1838 speech to a group in Springfield, Illinois. From whence shall we expect the approach of danger? Shall some transatlantic military giant step the earth and crush us a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Africa, Asia could not by force take a drink from the Ohio River or make a track on the Blue Ridge in the trail of a thousand year, the trial of a thousand years. No, if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we will live forever or die by suicide. Lincoln's statement highlights how the greatest threat to the United States is the nation itself. And Burns said, right now, we're looking down the muzzle of that gun. Now, this is why more and more people have been reaching out, because I think that especially in the last 18 months, uh, the veneer of the legacy brand countries, number one, caring about you. We've seen Americans left behind in Afghanistan. We've seen people stranded in the pandemic. Nobody uh, was too concerned about them. Uh, the country not caring about you, that's come from the forefront. I've been saying that from day one of Nomad Capitalist. People are now seeing it. Uh, you have people who not only you know, see the taxes are going up, uh, and you can argue whether that's right or wrong. Certainly, we believe in going where you're treated best, and that means not paying half of your income in taxes, uh, to be wasted, to be squandered, to leave behind military equipment for the enemy to take, for whatever it is that you're squandering it on. They squander a lot of it. Uh, but not only that, you know, what is driving the push to higher taxes? This is where the Civil War part comes in. Now, is he being extreme? You tell me. You leave a comment below. I don't want to be extreme, but certainly... You look at the, the climate that, again, people are telling me. I have not been to the U.S. but for a week in the last um, about seven or eight years at this point. It's been a week there in 2017. That's the last I've ever set foot other than uh, a transfer through JFK Airport later in 2017. I've not been there. And so certainly in a week, I did not tell the difference that many people are telling me has come about over the last eight years uh, where people are really at each other's throats. If you're successful, that is now an evil word. Capitalism is evil. You create a business. Somehow small businesses have always been favored by politicians because they want to pander, um, because they want to make it look like they're doing something. A lot of people in the U.S. now and in other Western countries don't even approve of small businesses now because you're exploiting people's labor, you're taking advantage, everyone should make $15, isn't it $20, isn't it $30 an hour? You know, even small businesses now are being punished and are being frowned upon. Success is not looked at you know, kindly. But yet the politicians, driven by, again, a growing number of Americans and Westerners, want to take more of your money through wealth taxes, unrealized capital gains taxes, 
it's a very interesting uh, situation because they don't want you to have the money, but then they want you to have it so they can take it and pay for all their pet projects. And so this is what people are telling me is uh, not only the culture has changed, uh, but the, just the culture of uh, what is moving the country forward. I said many years ago that the United States was the Paris Hilton of countries. Now, Paris Hilton perhaps has had some, uh, some business successes uh, since I started saying that. Uh, but the idea was that someone who was generations removed from what made the country successful in the first place and therefore didn't really need to worry about it. When we talk about countries in Eastern Europe, parts of uh, Latin America, parts of Asia, these are countries that have realized what happens when you do really dumb stuff and people clash and wealth is despised and creating jobs and creating... But when all that stuff is frowned upon and spit upon, they've seen what happened in the last couple decades or even less and perhaps they don't want to go back there because those lessons are still fresh but in the Paris Hilton of countries perhaps not as relevant as a of an example as it once was uh, it's very easy to say well hey look at Norway I'm sure our country of 330 million people will do exactly the same as their country of 4 million where they all pretty much agree yes let's have higher taxes I was in Sweden once I couldn't find too many people who wanted lower taxes I guess there are a few but it doesn't seem like people are at each other's throats in these countries, in, in Denmark or in, in Norway. There's just kind of this general vibe that, hey, you know, paying high taxes is the deal and we're all doing it. Um, and that's by and large what people do. Um, and that's why you don't see tons of great innovations and ideas coming out of Denmark. Um, even though it is a more free economy, technically speaking, than the United States. Um, and so this is what people tell me. And this is what I observe. And these do appear to be conditions where it may or may, not be, may or may not be a civil war, but it's getting worse. And you look at the last couple of elections, and I even compare that to in my lifetime. Some of you have been along a lot, around a lot longer. In my lifetime, I mean, it was never uh, pleasant in these elections, but it was always a lot more civil than it is now. And it wasn't as much ad hominem, and it wasn't a much, uh, as much against you, the nomad the capitalist. But this is something I've been, I've been talking about in my own family for 25 years that would come to this point. And that's what my father said back in the late 90s, you should go where you're treated best. You should find the best place where it's not just about reducing your taxes as much as possible. And for people who are concerned about things like a civil war, who are concerned about riots, who are concerned about just you know, general discontent and, and having more of their wealth taken, having more of their freedoms taken away by people who just don't like them, uh, it's not about necessarily paying zero tax. Many people who come to me are happy to pay some tax. Now, if they're going to make the dramatic step of moving overseas, sure, they'd like to pay less tax. Even Americans can do that. Uh, move overseas, you can pay dramatically less tax. As low as zero, but you know, many people are saying, hey, I'll pay 10% for a better lifestyle in a, in a more sane environment. Um, so all these forces are coming to a head. And so it is about protecting yourself. It's about protecting your wealth. It's about protecting your ability to invest in your own business. This is what is at stake. Will a civil war break out? I mean, certainly you have uh, states like California that are very aggressive in saying, we want to raise taxes. We're going to tax you even after you leave the state for the next 10 years. You have other states that are relatively friendly. You've seen the Texases and the Floridas and even the Tennessees absorbing people over the last year and a half who are looking for more freedom, who are looking for lower taxes. My perspective, as always, has been if you're going to move, you might as well move. There are other English-speaking countries in the world. There are other places where you can speak English. There are other places where you can learn the language. They're going to offer you much more personal freedom away from the federal government. That's the big proponent, or big push for a lot of this stuff. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, better lifestyle, more freedom, uh, lower taxes. There are other countries in the world where you can get that, including many where they speak English. <clears throat> but if we're just talking about the actual, you know, country falling apart, uh, this is something that, I mean, look at the fact that, you know, there was a fringe movement in California that said we want to leave the, the, the union. There's been, you know, tiny, you know, movements in other states. Now, do I take those seriously? Not really. And that brings me to the point of, you know, what do you do if you believe that the U.S. is going to be a civil war? Some of you say we're going to stay and fight. Sorry, I don't believe you. You're not going to go out there and get your hands dirty. It's easy to say you're going to stay and fight from behind a keyboard. Let's be honest. I'm fighting more for your freedom than you are because I'm out there putting myself, I'm sure there's plenty of people right now. If I try to go to Australia and get a visa, I'm sure they're going to look me up. Oh yeah, you complain about Australia? 
yeah, who knows what we're going to do. It's easy to sit, you know, sit behind the keyboard, you know, fart sniffer 747, and talk about how you're going to get it there, unlike people like me, uh, and you're going to fight to the death. I don't believe it. <clears throat> Maybe a few of you will. But quite frankly, it would seem better to have uh, a second residence and a second passport where, forget the financial part for a minute, forget that the taxes are going up, and that that's the byproduct of people simply hating the fact that you're successful and thinking it's so unfair and you didn't earn that. Obama said it, but now it's, now it's kind of part of the cultural lexicon in some circles where, but you had all these privileges and you had all the advantages and, and you, know, you went to public school, so now you're forever indebted to us. Forget the taxes on that. Do understand the culture that leads to they hate your wealth. They want to take it, whether it's in retirement accounts, whether it's un unrealized capital gains, or whether it's sitting in a bank account. They want to take it. But talk just a minute about the culture. Wouldn't it be much easier to have a second residence and a second passport and a second home somewhere else where you could go to rather than having to fight? Is it going to get physical? I don't know. Uh, I would be interested to hear your comments on that. What I do know is... Uh, in some you know, small areas, it's gotten physical. People have you know, riots in their neighborhood. Crime is going up. I saw the other day, murders in the U.S. are up something like 30% in 2020. And again in 2021, something like 12%. Uh, there is, you know, crime is on the rise. You're seeing cities like New York, crime is on the rise. San Francisco, chaos is on the rise. And so, you know, my challenge is, do I want to sit around and wait to see What's going to happen? Are you going to have civil war all at 1865? No, who knows? But I think that obviously a lot of wars are going to be different than they were 150 you know, some years ago. Just that's just how it works. Uh, what you are going to see is fewer freedoms, um, less money, just social unrest. That's already increasing. And so if I'm in your position and I've got a lot at stake personally, uh, for my family, uh, for, my, for my business and my finances. I don't want to wait and see if Ken Burns is right. I want to have my game plan ready to go. When we had Nomad Capitalist Live, our, our sold out live event in, uh, in Mexico earlier this year, Robert Kiyosaki came and said, you have three days. Where can you get in three days? Well, you're not going to get a second passport in three days. You're not going to get a residence status in three days. And by the way, look at, look at Venezuela, for example. It has a great passport on paper. You try and take a Venezuelan passport, if you can even get one, by the way. I know many people in Venez from Venezuela because I, I spend time in Colombia. You can't even get a passport. And I have, I have family-in-law who lives in Venezuela also. You can't even get a passport. Uh, or you've got to pay thousands of dollars to get one. You can't even get it. But if you had one, all those countries allegedly you can travel to visa-free, they're going to give you a, a, a looking over uh, when you get there. And if you're coming from a country with a civil war, yeah, I think they're going to give you a looking over too. Uh, so where are you going to go where you're a leg up from a tourist? You're not going to get a second residence permit in three days. You're not going to buy a property somewhere overseas for three days. And so uh, I'm not saying this is what's happening. I'm talking about what Ken Burns is talking about. I'm passing along what Robert Kiyosaki was saying. But what I do know is it's going to get worse. It's already been getting worse. And rather than saying, I'll leave when it's too late, get yourself set up. Have the place you can get to in three days, because you can get pretty much anywhere in the world for three days, whether you're like Robert Kiyosaki and your private jet, or whether you've got to use more egalitarian means of getting there. Uh, perhaps you want to have one place to get to quickly, like in the Caribbean. You can get a Caribbean citizenship by investment. Nonstop flight to some of those islands, there you go. And then from there, you go to where you're going. But at least you're, you're, you're going to your citizenship country. Maybe you're not set up with a house there. But then from there, you've escaped. You go somewhere further afield. I just think having this stuff ready to go in preparation for what might be happening is very important. Um, now, if you are not a seven or eight or nine figure entrepreneur or investor, you could simply have a residence permit in a country like Mexico. You can simply drive in. Uh, that might not be a bad thing to do. We've talked about the Great American Plan B in a separate episode. But if you have the means to do it, residence, passport, home, so that when this happens, you get out and you have an already ready to go plan uh, so you don't have to deal with whatever the fall it is. Because to say civil war, I think that's gonna change from what again happened before to where it's just gonna be a slow increase in the boiling water to where conditions get worse and worse and worse and worse. 
you've got to make a decision at some point in that process when it's too much. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply, learn about our unique tried and true process, garner over years of experience, and learn how you can become our client.